Well, hello and welcome to Penelope's Chinwag. Another episode, another week. They're flying by, aren't they? And I so want to slow down time because it's May. And you know I love May. It's my favourite month. All the flowers, I'm looking at them all here, absolutely gorgeous. In fact, the little film at the end, we went and visited Goodenstone Park. And I'm going to tell you a little bit more about Goodenstone Park, the history of it and the surrounding area next week but just for now we went there and had lunch and uh, I took some some flowers I thought well last week it was flowers from my garden and this week it's flowers from Goodenstone Park but you can't have too many flowers can you so that's what the little film is this week I hope you enjoy it we've got a fascinating fact about ants and how they clean themselves and what that can mean for engineers. We've got some looking back in history with mum 1920 to 1930. So I found that quite interesting, found out some new things and I'm going to have a little chat with you now. So that's about it for this week. Oh just a little bit of yes yeah, so I did do a little bit of cooking and I'll tell you about that yeah when it comes. So where to start? Well as you can see Tilly's settled herself in because you know hares they're solitary creatures they're not like rabbits. Rabbits live underground well maybe 20 of them all together in a warren but hares no they're solitary and they just make a little dent in the top uh, you know in the grass and um, yeah, that's that's how they say. So haven't got the safety of underground, so actually she's really enjoy. Well, she's landed on her feet. Let's put it like that. She feels safe here. She's enjoying herself. She went down the allotment this week. There was this neat little pile of clothes, and uh, actually she's kept something for herself. I don't know if you can see. She's decided it suits her, and I'm sure Holly won't mind when they eventually have a chat. But um, I think she came across Holly's dress and Holly's shoes. Of course, I've left Holly's dress over there. I'll go and get it. It was all neatly folded up. And the edge is so pretty, so so good for a hedgehog, you know, getting in amongst the leaves. Very pretty because she must have caught it on a quill and Tilly mended it for her. Yeah, she had a bit of wool left over from her dress and she's mended it. So I think Holly will be very pleased when she eventually, yeah, when she finds it. And uh, here it is, very pretty. Three little buttons down the back. The leaf. So that was all folded neatly along with, come on show them, show them, along with a pair of shoes. Well she rather's taken to the shoes but she doesn't really need them but she fancied them so she's just borrowing them for the minute. The soles are in a dark brown and then the uppers are a lighter brown cute aren't they so they're with the dress however she wants to keep the bag and i've said she can it she puts her carrots in there after she's been down the allotment and it does match her doesn't it so yes yeah, she's got a bag so she just sits about and then she put this off Hang on, I'll put her back. She bootles off to the allotment when she fancies it, which is uh, rather nice. So, so I just wanted to talk about this pattern. I made it during lockdown, and it's a simplicity. I'll put the, you know, as always, down below or to the side, wherever you see it. It's a wrap-around apron in two lengths. And I made it, and... I wanted to try it out so I've got an old sheet out the airing cupboard and I mean when I say old it was old and now it's I've been cooking in it and I just stamped on and made it it's a crossover at the back that really is a bit thin now 
but I wanted to try it out and I was very pleased with it. You can make it in no time at all. No time at all. So I just stamped that on and then I had some very favourite fabric that, you know, I'd used in quilts and this and that and I knew I, you know, what's the point of it in your, well, in my case, in my suitcase, I've got suitcases of fabric, old leather ones, you know, lovely with, with, um, initials on them and so I may oh I love this one look at the colours it's 1950s colours isn't it it's beautiful so I made this crossover pinny and I think I must have worn it when I was cooking and somebody said you know is it a pattern so there's the pattern yes I'm wearing the Oh, I've forgotten the name of it now. It's a Tilly and the Buttons pattern. And I put it on the screen. I was never happy with it. Why? Because I had to make a lot of modifications for it to fit me. I mean, they made it this big, you know, and I'm this big. And the only way you can get it on is to make it this big. But then I put little ties and then I feel I don't... I had to take it in. I take took the sleeve all of it. I didn't want it right up here so I made it wasted. I'll stand up and show you. Looks alright doesn't it? What's wrong? You see I altered it but what they're doing now is they just for a, a few pence you can send off because they've put the back pieces with a button, buttonholes and buttons so you can easily get it on. I mean, this was a, to make it fit you and get it on. It was almost impossible for me. So I had to do. So I'm going to make it again. I'm going to send off for the back bits and I'm going to make it again. And I'm going to do it in a lot more flowy of fabric. This was really, really. So I mean, this dress cost me something like £10. Well, that's fine as a twirl. And I know what I, how I want it now. I want it more stretchy, more. Yeah. So this is fine, but quite right and I like to get things quite right you know yes you know that don't you Tilly things have to be quite right you know anyway that's it really that's it for my little chat this week I'm still knitting Pete's jumper and I'm halfway up the second sleeve so all I've got to do is just that half a sleeve sew it together but I'm not in a rush because the wool isn't for summer I just do it pick it up when I fancy it you know so I hope you're all all right uh, I didn't introduce myself did I I'm Penny I live in the southeast of England with my husband Pete and my four chickens and they're all well at the moment uh, mum sometimes makes an appearance which she is this week Pete sometimes does and he was telling my daughter a little story, it just came out, about him and his link to Woolworths. <laughs> I said, you must tell that on uh, Chinwag. So hopefully we'll get that up for next week. So I'm going to say cheerio for now and I'm going to put the fascinating fact up. Cleanliness is vital for an insect if it's to fly, climb and sense its surroundings. Dirty antennae reduce an ant's ability to navigate, communicate and pick up scents. So you will never find a dirty insect, says zoologist Alexander Hackman from the Department of Zoology. They've figured out how to cope with surface contamination. Hackman studied the mechanism that a species of ant uses to clean its antennae. They found that the ant removes particles of different sizes by bending its leg to form a kind of clamp and then pulling each antenna through the clamp. Coarse bristles in the clamp knock off the largest pieces of dirt. Smaller contaminants are removed by a fine comb. Then the smallest particles, as tiny as one eightieth the diameter of a human hair, are removed by the bristles of an even finer brush. Hackman and his team believe that the mechanism used by ants to keep their antennae clean could find application in industry, 
Similar methods would be useful in maintaining cleanliness during the manufacture of delicate microelectronic components where even minor contamination can result in defects. I thought that was an interesting, fascinating fact, how ants can clean themselves so well. So, shall we pop round and see Mum now and talk about uh, things that were going on in the 1920s? Okay. Morning, everybody. Lovely to be here again. Good morning. I've popped round to Mum's and we're going to do a little resume, Mum. I'm going to start in 1920 oh. um, because, just because I fancied doing it. I've got a nice book here and it's got some interesting facts and I thought we'd pick up on the ones yeah. that you remember. Yeah. The first helicopter flight has lived off. A French engineer has managed to achieve true flight in a helicopter. Yeah. We take that so yeah. much for granted, don't we? Yeah, yeah. 1921, first clinic for birth control in London, the Mother's Clinic. The country's first birth control clinic opened in London today in the face of bitter opposition from clergymen and doctors who fear it will encourage immorality. The Holloway Clinic aims to give free consultations and cheap contraceptives to, to poorer women overburdened by childbearing. And uh, that's in Holloway, Mum, so well, that's right near yes, where you were, wasn't yes. it? That's where you were born. Yes. Yeah, in there. Well, I didn't realise that that it, was that early. Early. Well, no. not many people have got access to no, it by the sounds of it. No. Oh, there's also, it says, a concern as skirts rise yes. and morals yes. decline. And that was because all the films, the, the films came out, and the, yeah. the American actresses, there were silent films, but the American actresses oh, wore much shorter dresses. Yes. Than, it mm -hmm. says that the skirts have been steadily rising since the war, which was yes. the first war, yes. World War. And in America, well, imagine it says there's now thousands of women showing uh, calves Cross of their the legs. legs. The calves. Yes. Yeah. Yes, not their knees. No, the not the knees. Yes. In America, where yes. there's been widespread condemnation of the trend of minimum clothes and maximum cosmetics. Yes. And in Utah... They're considering imprisoning in inappropriately dressed women. Oh. Wow, goodness me. Thousands of Britons risked the rain and packed excursion coaches and trains heading for the coast, breaking all records on the 50th anniversary of the first bank holiday. They went to Brighton, yes. they went to South End, and yes. in the north, town full notices appeared on the roads in Blackpool. Yes, day, dis, day excursions were very popular yeah. then. When I was small, we, were they? we went, South End was our nearest Yeah, you've place. got your picture of you yes. walking down with your mum and dad yes. in South End, haven't yes. you? Yeah. Yes. That, was a, that was a day trip and lovely out because that was a holiday for us. Yes. You know, that was our holiday. You didn't go on holiday, no, did you? Never no. had holidays, just day no. trips. Well, uh, even sweaters can be chic, says Chanel. Oh. Coco Chanel. She's decreed that even sweaters can be chic. Such is her sway in the world of fashion that it's expected that the idea will be greeted enthusiastically. Once an orphaned peasant girl, Coco doesn't only influence clothes, but smell as well. Her newly launched perfume, Chanel No. 5, is very successful. Oh, yes. Well, there we go. 1923. Mm. Did it say how much it was? No. No, I should think it was no. out of our pockets. Yes. My mother's pocket. Anyway. Yes. Did she wear perfume, your mother? I wonder if she did. Well, I think she did once Woolworths opened where everything was sixpence. Oh, I mean, that, right I know that go. was a long yes. way ahead from that. Yes. But I should think that she would have would have been very expensive. Yes. Then. And now, Lady Elizabeth Bowes Lyon, who's the Queen's yes. mum. Yes. She, uh, she got married yes. in 1923, mum. 
and she looks just like Pete's mum. She's got the that the veil the going flat yeah. over yeah. over her. Uh, very very similar. Yeah. England spoke to Australia last night oh, by wireless, yes. mum. Nineteen twenty four. So that's all new. Yes. Well, you remember listening oh, to the wireless the radio, yes. Yeah. Yeah, we do too. Mm. That's why I was singing K yeah. Sarah Sarah, Mum. And, you know, my friend and I, we said, how come we knew it so well? Yeah. We were only young. Yeah. Uh, the but light was, program yes, on all the time. it was on the radio. Yeah, all the time, yeah. Mum, wasn't it? Yes. Who have we got here? The strange case of the vanishing novelist. This is in the year yeah. you were born. Yeah. Oh, that's Ag Agatha Christie. That's yeah. it. Yes, Agatha Christie, Mum. Yeah. She uh, took herself off to this uh, hotel in Yorkshire and um, she was missing. And the uh, maid said, oh, there's somebody who looks like her here. And so it says, Colonel Christie travelled north and reclaimed his missing wife. That's interesting words, oh, reclaimed his yeah. missing wife. Like a parcel. Yes. Uh, but she uh, she didn't know why she was there. No. Her memory had gone. Yes. Her life was so busy, busy, yeah. busy with writing. Got a bit overwhelmed. Being so famous. Yeah. But I should think she was interviewed all the time yeah. after each book she wrote. Oh, here we go, Mum. We were trying to remember a word. The current rage for women to... Shingle their Shingle. hair. Yes. 1927. Yes. And of course, Mum, Pete's oh, mum had shingled yes. hair. Yeah. Yes. And uh, we call it a yes. bob now. But then it was shingled. And it Much says shorter. long hair for women and beards and moustaches for men are now out of date. Yes. And it says that um, mm. the hairdressing uh, trades were saying to women, don't worry, they were encouraging them uh, with scientific assurances that they would not go bald through having their hair cut short. Because women thought, if I have my hair cut, I might go bald. Yes, like men, I suppose, because they had... Wait, yes. Stop it growing. Or yes. What? Yes, that's right. An Institute of Trichologists official also claimed that baldness in English men was likely to decrease as the fashion for shorter and healthier hair became more popular. Mm -hmm. So rather oh. than them going, isn't that amazing yes. how women must have yes. worried that? Yes. Well, I never. Mm. Londoners die and the Tate is threatened as Thames bursts the banks. 14 people uh, died, but it says that the Tower of London, which is usually a dry moat, filled up with water. Oh. The Thames. Well, you were too, so yes. I don't suppose you remembered no. that. It was a sudden thaw and a high tide because it was in January because of, I suppose, lots of snow and yes. ice. So I think they've got all things set in mm -hmm. place now. And in 1928, in September, guess what they found, Mum? In St Mary's Hospital in London. Penicillin. Oh. And they found it. Yeah, just by chance. Wow. Chance played a big part in Fleming's discovery. Mm -hmm. He left a plate of sta or Staphylococcus bacteria, which are responsible for many human infections, mm -hmm. out in his laboratory for a few days. Mm -hmm. And when he inspected it, he noticed that it became contaminated with mould and that around the mould patches and that around the mould patches were rings that were clear of bacteria. So it looked mm. like, although it was mould there, yes. that mould was exactly. helping to uh, clear yeah, up the harm. I didn't realise that that was so early. Yeah, 1928, Mum. Wow. But I suppose you couldn't get hold of it because, no. as you said, just having a little bit of Very dentistry yes. cost you too Good much money. Much. Yes, and that was when I was 10. 10, you know. 36. And that was... That was oh. Yeah, that was a terrific thing to have to pay seven and six for somebody to come yeah. and see me, my bleeding. You know, yeah, my teeth were bleeding so badly that right. we had to get something done. Right, and I couldn't move. I couldn't go anywhere, and so Mum had to pay for the doctor to come, and that was seven and six months then, which was about a quarter of my dad's wages. Wow. I would think. 
So you really yeah. had to think twice oh, before you yeah. called the doctor then, yeah. before the NHS. Yeah. Yeah. Walt Disney, he invented Mickey Mouse in 1928. Oh, doctors in midnight rushed to the palace, Mum, because the king's condition worsened. So who was king in 1928, Mum? King George V. All righty ho then. He was poorly. April, birth of Queen Elizabeth II on the 21st of April. April. Yeah. 1926. Yeah. Yes. And of course, you yes. were born in June, June, weren't you? Yes. We've got traffic lights, Mum, in 21 provincial towns. And uh, in earlier this year, in Oxford Street, traffic lights were. Um, tried out and it says they were a success so it says the traffic was able to keep up an average speed of 10 miles, miles an, an hour, hour. 10 <laughs> but it says that the minister notes that lights may be unsuitable where horse-drawn traffic abounds and you told me that crossing the road when you were a little girl was oh, quite frightening yeah it was and the there, start of all the mingling of the horses and the cars there weren't any um Zebra crossings. Zebra crossings yeah. then. No. no. So you said it was yes. quite frightening and crossing you always the road. Had to, I was always brought up to ask yeah. somebody to see, see me you. across the oh, road. Oh, righty ho. Ask yes. someone if to see If I was you worried, across. if it was that kind of road, yeah. if it was wide, and yeah. to be careful. Oh, righty ho. Yes. It says one penny buys a bottle of warm milk, complete with a hygienic straw for making slurping noises for these London school children. Oh. So you were three, yeah. and it says you could buy a bottle of milk oh. for a penny. Amen. Yeah. Oh, goodness. You could imagine them making noises with that straw <laughs> bubbling the milk yes. up. Yes. <laughs> so I think we'll leave it there. We've done the 20s. So oh. next week we'll do the 30s, which oh. I think you'll remember a bit more, oh, won't yes. you, because you'll be a bit older. Yes. So uh, it's been interesting. That will bring us up to the war then, 1939. Yes, that's yes. right. Okay it's then, so lovely. we'll say cheerio. Yes, lovely. Bye-bye. Lovely to see you. Bye-bye. Yeah, hope you enjoyed that. And thank you for all your comments. I know a lot of you mention Mum and say how much you enjoy her little bits. You know, her piece, well, whatever you call it, you know, us getting together. And uh, I always pass it on. I read out the comments and I pass your well wishes on to her. She really loves it. Yes, it's, it's a pleasure. So, what's next? Well, I made a cake. Uh, well, I didn't make a cake. I made some fairy cakes. And I thought, well, I'm not filming me making fairy cakes. I mean, you start making fairy cakes at the age of four. But what was different about this is, as you know, my daughter Kim is now can't eat, um, you know, flour with the gluten in. So I bought some flour without gluten. And a friend of mine said, honestly, I think you'll find it's fine. So started off with some fairy cakes and I just put all the stuff in the bowl, whizzed it round, popped it into the, I didn't even have the same size, you know, little paper cases. I just have what I had in there and they came up fine. And then I made some buttercream uh, to put on the top. Uh, they were I, 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 some zest of a lemon I popped in. Uh, well, I call them four, four, four and two. So we have four of flour, four of butter, four of uh, caster sugar, two eggs. And I did the grated rind of a lemon to make them lemony. As I put that as well in the, um, you know, topping. And Pete taste tested one. Right, so you're going to taste test these for us. Not all of them. <laughs> no, not all of them. Choose one. And they're gluten free. And we want to see if they taste like the cakes you normally eat from me. Or if you think they've got a tang, or it's the taste test for the kids. Taste okay. Very nice. Very nice. Indeed. And then I put the rest in the freezer, took them out. My brother came to visit from Ireland this week. We haven't seen him since August. So that was a treat for mum. And popped those together with some raspberries and something for us to eat. 
for afters for lunch, you know. And they thawed out beautifully and they take, well, you wouldn't know. Unless anybody told you, you just wouldn't know. So I feel very pleased when my daughter comes to visit or when I go there, I can now take her her favourite cake. So it was well worth doing. So time for the little film now. And uh, it, as I say, it's of Goodenston Park. I'm not going to ramble on about Goodenston Park, say Jane Austen has got a link there. I'm going to do that for next week because I've got some film. And I'll put the little film up and I'll tell you about Goodenston Park and her, the link with Jane Austen before that next week. And for this week, it's just a walk round enjoying the flowers, photographs. So I'll see you next week. Take care. Thank you for all your comments. Thank you for your well wishes and have a good week. Bye. Straight cruising, headed for bruising. Watching out for number one You gotta slow down Look around you, son Today is just today And not tomorrow Do something, be the star